Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to Newsto. So, hope everybody had a great weekend. I know I did. Fly equals fly. 5 -0, let's go. But in terms of gaming, something very interesting seems to be happening with Xbox Game Pass. I, I think by this point, Game Pass has kind of established itself as a market disruptor. And what I mean by that is that it's really changed things as it's viewed as this just extraordinary deal in gaming. But with all of these games releasing into it on a monthly basis, there is this looming question among some fans out there. Is it sustainable, and are they actually making money? Well, unfortunately, Microsoft doesn't really disclose those numbers publicly. But that's one thing that's very interesting about this Activision Blizzard acquisition, because we are now getting a glimpse at different things behind the scenes, and that includes, yes, Xbox Game Pass, and how much money it currently is making, which actually pairs well with something Phil Spencer alluded to at one point. And also, we do have a couple of interesting games that are already being teased for the Game Awards, so we're going to talk about that as well. But before we do anything, do make sure to hit those buttons below. Hit that like, kick that subscribe, and yes, whack that bell as hard as you possibly can. With that said, though, let's just go and jump right into our first topic of the week, being about Persona. Of course, Persona 5 Royal will be releasing on October 21st for the Nintendo Switch, Xbox Series, and it's even releasing into Xbox Game Pass. I know a lot of y'all are going to be really excited to play this game on one of those platforms. Now, it apparently has broken street date a little bit early, and it's appearing on places like eBay, but I mean, officially, Persona is finally, and really quite frankly, logically, coming over to other platforms. It, it's still shocking to me that it took Atlas this long to make it happen, but, you know, I, I, I guess it's better late than never, and this is an excellent game for anybody who hasn't gotten the chance to play it yet. However, Persona 3 and Persona 4 Golden are also coming over to Nintendo and Xbox sometime here soon. Actually, it's coming over to PlayStation as well. And now, we actually have a date as to when we can expect to play them. Atlas did post this over on Twitter where they said, Persona 3 Portable and Persona 4 Golden release for modern platforms on January 19th of 2023. Now, if you look at the picture they posted, it only shows Xbox and Windows, which is a little odd considering, again, this is releasing for all platforms. But I assume that's because Microsoft has the marketing rights or something like that. I, however, would expect these games to release on the Switch and PlayStation at the same time, being, again, January 19th. What I will say, though, is that despite Persona 5 Royal being the most popular, that game really just kind of catapulted Persona into just a whole new echelon of how beloved these games are. But I actually do like Persona 4 Golden more. To me, this is the best entry in a franchise thanks to its story, its atmosphere, and just its overall charming cast of characters. But regardless of which game is the best, all three of these games are great and you, re you really can't go wrong with any three of these Persona entries. So again, if you haven't played them already, definitely go and mark your calendars for, well, either October 21st or now January 19th, where you can play the Persona games finally on other platforms. Now, Nintendo also revealed the next Nintendo 64 title coming over to Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack being Pilot Wing 64. If you are a subscriber, it will be added to the service later this week on October 13th. Now, if you've never played this game before, they did drop a trailer, as you can see here. And I have to say, this trailer, it, it caught me by surprise. Nintendo, I guess, they, they decided that they're going to include a sweet, soothing jazz voice over to this trailer. I'm actually going to leave a link in the description below if you want to go check it out yourself but it's definitely not something that I was expecting from Nintendo out of all companies. It was done very well, though, and I, I thought it was quite humorous. I even saw some fans say things like it was one of Nintendo's best trailers ever, so yeah, definitely go check out that full video. Again, I'll leave that link in the description below. Nonetheless, though, this is another good addition for Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack. I know the price of this service was criticized there when they first released it, but now that we're about a year in, there, there's actually some really good games that you can play now, including Paper Mario, there's Banjo-Kazooie, there's F-Zero X, and the list kind of goes on and on. And now here you have another good entry being Pilot Wings 64. Again, you will be able to play this one on October 13th. Now, we also have an interesting update for PlayStation PC games, really, once again. 
This is something that we've talked a lot about as of recent, because Sony, they do appear to be making a big push into PC gaming, and their efforts continue on here as you're now able to connect your Steam and PSN accounts. As you can see here posted by Nixus, the studio behind that Spider-Man PC port, they say, link your Steam and PlayStation Network accounts today to get early unlocks and skill points in Spider-Man PC. You can then see the different rewards you'll get by doing this, but this really is just that next step in Sony's big PC push. Now that you can actually link your accounts, trophy support, maybe that could end up coming sometime here soon as well, and there's also a very real chance that we're getting closer to Sony maybe eventually releasing their own launcher on PC. This is actually already been suggested through a data mine, and really with Herman Hulse pretty much already confirming that some of their live service games will likely release day and date on PC alongside their PlayStation console counterpart. These are things that they might want to get up and running to further entice fans into that cross-platform ecosystem. This would be a smart direction to take, just kind of tying them together. It, it does seem like Sony has some plans. It's, it's kind of been suggested already, and you know, this is just kind of the, the latest hint that yeah, these things could end up coming. And again, I think by this point, Sony's PC commitment, it's more than evident by this point. Let's go and talk about Xbox Game Pass, though, because we did finally, yes, finally get some information on how much money it makes for Microsoft. This has been an ongoing question for a, a very long time, as not everybody is necessarily convinced it's actually sustainable, partially because it's just far too good to be true, right? We'll get more into that here in just a second. But this is one of the reasons that this Activision Blizzard acquisition is interesting, especially over in Brazil. Unlike most regulatory bodies, they do make their findings public, so we're getting this look behind the scenes that we don't usually get to see for ourselves. This is how we first learned that Sony was complaining to regulators about the Activision Blizzard buyout. Still a little absurd on that point, but now we're also getting some information on Game Pass revenue. Now keep in mind, this is not profits but this is still information that's been secret up to this point. Microsoft, though, they did have to divulge this information in this buyout, and thanks to Cade, we can now see that in the 2021 calendar year, Xbox Game Pass actually accounted for 2.9 billion dollars, yes, a billion with a B, in revenue. Now, the thing about this is, is that this apparently doesn't include PC Game Pass either, so it actually might be even higher than that. And to kind of put things into perspective here, this is very impressive, really, for a multitude of reasons. The first of which is that this is already 18% of Xbox's total annual revenue, which is 16.28 billion dollars. So what you're kind of seeing here is a subscription service that's still in its infancy stage, that's important here, a service that still hasn't really fully hit its stride and won't until their new studios are consistently releasing exclusive games. And even then, with all that said, it's still accounting for nearly one fifth of Xbox's revenue. That is very impressive because Game Pass this is a service that is still absolutely growing and will continue to do so with Xbox's new first party studios, especially if they do get this Activision Blizzard acquisition through regulations. That will really, and I just mean majorly catapult those Game Pass numbers considering the popularity of Call of Duty. I mean, on a yearly basis, Call of Duty is among the very most popular games. The other very impressive part about all this, though, is that when you compare Game Pass to similar services, you can see how far ahead Xbox Game Pass actually is. In the same table, it does show that Nintendo Switch Online saw $932 million in revenue in 2021, and then EA Play, they reportedly made $356 million. So Game Pass is far ahead of both of those services. Now PlayStation, they did just put together their own competing service, being PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium, but it's still too early to see exactly how well they're doing with all of that. Hopefully we'll get information on that sometime in the future as well. The question of how well Game Pass is doing though, I think this does kind of answer that to an extent, not necessarily fully, but it does show you that Game Pass is off to a very good start. Again, I'd still say the Game Pass is in its infancy stage, but this does show you the potential of a service like this and why Microsoft is heavily investing into it. I think one way to kind of look at this is the commitment that Microsoft, the company, is making in the Xbox brand. You know, Xbox has been around since 2001, but up until recently, 
Microsoft, the company, they, they've never really fully backed the Xbox brand. But then suddenly, here comes Saudi Nadella, and they just kind of went all in and started to go on this big purchasing spree. They, they bought all these different studios, and I, I don't think that that's necessarily a coincidence that all of this started happening right around the same time frame that they introduced Xbox Game Pass. First party content drives subscription services, and Microsoft, they know this. It's better to invest into these first party studios for the long term. And now that Game Pass is seeing some success with around 25 million subscribers and $2.9 billion in annual revenue, it seems to have given Microsoft enough confidence to fully invest even more heavily with these major acquisitions like Bethesda and now a nearly $70 billion acquisition in Activision Blizzard. I think that that just kind of shows you the proof that you need when talking about is Game Pass sustainable. Very clearly, Microsoft, which is a very smart and big company, they seem to think that it is. But if you don't want to take my word for it here, or some of my speculation, well, maybe you'll believe Phil Spencer instead because last year he did say this. Game Pass is doing very well from a business perspective and creative and engagement perspective. So it continues to be, I think, a real differentiator for our platform and enabler for creators and players. It's not the only focus of the organization and it, as a standalone thing, is very sustainable as it sits today, like just today. So, I mean, there you have it. And when you do combine that statement with the information that we now have today, it makes sense. Game Pass is currently sustainable with $2.9 billion in revenue, and this just kind of further explains why Microsoft is just so willing to make these large-scale acquisitions like we've never seen in gaming history before. So I think this might kind of alleviate some of the concerns that we see when it comes to Game Pass, as it appears that it's already doing pretty good. It might actually, as Phil Spencer said, it might actually already be sustainable. Now, we do also have the Game Awards incoming this December, and interestingly enough, two big game reveals are already being teased. The first of which is actually that new Crash Bandicoot game that, I mean, we've really been hearing about for a couple years now, being Wumpa League. Toys for Bob themselves have already hinted at the development of this new title, but reportedly, it's actually a completely different Crash Bandicoot experience than we've ever seen before. According to Windows Central's Jess Corden, he did leak this new game out earlier this year and described it as a four-player brawler of sorts. It is supposed to be quite a bit different, but the thing is, is that we might finally, yes, finally get our first look at exactly whatever this game is at the Game Awards on December 8th. Now, the reason that we've come to this conclusion is because Activision, they sent a care package to a YouTuber by the name of the Canadian Guy A. By the way, go check his channel out. He does a very good job over there. But this care package did include a reveal and a tease on top of that. So the care package, point blank, did reveal that Crash Bandicoot 4 is coming over to Steam on October 18th. So, I mean, if you haven't already played this game, truly, if you like 3D platformers, I cannot recommend this game enough. It's actually one of my own personal favorites within this genre. So this is already, and I mean already great news alone, but the more interesting part here is that they also included a curious statement on the bottom saying, hungry for more, try our new Wumpa Pizza for $12.08. Now the reason that this is so interesting is because 1208, being December 8th, well, that just so happens to be the same day of the Game Awards. So, I mean, yeah, at the bare minimum, it appears that Activision is teasing some type of Crash-related announcement here. Now, considering we've already heard a lot about Wumpa League, my own personal guess is that's probably what they're going to reveal here, but I guess we're really not going to have to wait too long. Crash Bandicoot, in some shape or form, looks to be at the Game Awards, and I am super, super excited to see whatever this game is. Now, the other game that's being teased here, though, really feels like a mainstay for any Jeff Keighley-related event, and that's a Hideo Kojima reveal. It's very well documented that Hideo Kojima and Jeff Keighley are very good friends, and they've made it a mission to have some type of reveal at almost all of his events. And this year's Game Awards, it appears to be no different. This all started when Hideo Kojima teased a new character for a new game where he posted this. The answer to who at TGS will be in the next where. Now this doesn't actually mention the Game Awards itself, but considering their history together, 
it stands to reason that a full reveal of whatever this game might be, it could possibly be revealed there. In fact, in a video last year, Hideo Kojima himself pretty much said that he will definitely be at the Game Awards next year, being 2022. Now, he did later on completely reveal this new character, which is played by the popular actress, Elle Fanning. So now, we're just kind of waiting to see what game she is set to appear in. From what we already currently know, there's two different possibilities that I think it could possibly be. It could either be that new Xbox game that he's working on, this has already been revealed in some capacity, and it's currently rumored to be a horror game codenamed Overdose that did leak right before E3 earlier this year, or the Summer Game Fest or whatever. And then their other possibility here is maybe Death Stranding 2. There does seem to be some suggestions out there that this game also exists as well. Either way though, December 8th might be the place where we see one of these games. Let's go take a look at the poll of the day though, and I was kind of taking a look at Nintendo's upcoming lineup for the next few months, and I just kind of realized, man, they have a really good lineup of exclusive titles, so I wanted to ask you, Wolf, what upcoming exclusive Nintendo game releasing in 2022 are you most excited about? And as you can see here, the number one game actually is Bayonetta 3 with 40% of the votes, beating out Pokemon Scarlet and Violet with 35% of the votes. Then you have Mario Plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope at 14%, and then Harvestella at 4%. So, I mean, looking at this, what really stands out right away is that Bayonetta 3 is beating out a behemoth of a franchise being Pokemon. So, this does kind of bode well for Bayonetta 3. Now, now clearly, it's still not going to sell more than Scarlet and Violet. Pokemon is massive and is expected to sell probably between 15 to 25 million units. But it does kind of show you that much of the core community are very excited for Bayonetta 3. And that's a very good thing to see. I am very much looking forward to this game myself, as I am with Pokemon. Pokemon as well, quite frankly. A lot of you all probably know that Pokemon is one of my top three favorite franchises ever, alongside Gears of War and Uncharted. So anytime a new mainline Pokemon comes out, I'm pretty much always very, very pumped for it. Plus, I think Scarlet and Violet looks really good with some of its changes, and I want to see how all that works out. Going through some of the comments, though, there was definitely some love for Bayonetta 3. As you can see here, Headless posted, loved Bayonetta 1 and 2, and have been waiting for Bayonetta 3 for five years now. My hype is through the roof. And yeah, that is one thing about this particular release. Some fans have been waiting for this game for a very, very long time. There for a while, I mean, we were pretty much predicting this game to be at almost every single Direct. So I think that it's kind of built up a lot of hype just through all that alone. I, I did see one other comment though that included a game that I wasn't quite expecting to see because Soul Synthesis Records did post Metroid Prime Baby. So, I mean, unless this person is just trolling, it, it, it seems like there are still some people out there. They're kind of hoping those 2022 Metroid Prime rumors turns out to be true. I mean, personally, I'd love to see it myself, as I do love the Metroid franchise. But I think 2023 is, you know, it, it's starting to become uh, a little bit more likely if this game does truly exist. Which I still do very much remain hopeful that it does. Anyways, though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.